Hello students, welcome to lecture 1 of the online course on Photon Crystals, Fundamentals and Applications. So in this course, we will provide a detailed introduction to this new technology, Photonic Crystals, covering their fundamentals and discussing their latest advancements. Now if you look into Photonic Crystals, this is inspired by the concept of electronic band gaps in semiconductors and it was proposed uh, first in late 1980s as periodic structures that can control the flow of light. Now, these nanostructured materials have uh, shown immense potential towards controlling and manipulating the propagation of electromagnetic waves. In the future, photonic crystal also holds the promise to revolutionize various technologies. They can enable uh, ultra compact optical circuits. Uh, leading to faster and more efficient data communication. Additionally, they may open door to new advances in quantum computing and imaging technologies, paving the way for a brighter and more interconnected future. They also have a lot of application in 6G um, technology. So that is why photonic crystal becomes very relevant in today's world. This course will first uh, cover the overview and applications of photonic crystals. Then we will go into the fundamentals of uh, electromagnetic wave theory of light. We will talk about photonic band structures. Later on, the course will also focus on the analysis and discussions of 1D, 2D and 3D photonic crystals. This course will also introduce discussions regarding uh, photonic uh, periodic dielectric waveguides, photonic crystal slabs and photonic crystal fibers. So finally, the course will end up discussing um, photonic crystals for different applications. So we have actually designed this course for undergraduate and postgraduate students with some basic knowledge of physics and electromagnetics. So we hope that UG and PG students with background in electronics, electrical, instrumentation, physics, chemistry, chemical, material science and engineering and any researcher and or industry people working in the areas of photonics and related areas will be benefited from the course content. So we believe that this will surely motivate you to study further and explore this uh, exciting interdisciplinary area of research which has got endless opportunities. So here is the course plan. So we will cover uh, 10 modules over the span of 36 lectures. So the introduction week will cover the motivation and introduction to photonic crystals will give a brief overview of the photonic crystal technology and discuss the fundamentals of electromagnetic theory of light. In week two, we'll cover more or less all the fundamentals of electromagnetism in dielectric media needed for this particular course. So we'll discuss about electromagnetic properties of material, electromagnetism as eigenvalue problem and scaling properties of uh, Maxwell's equation. In week 3 and or module 3, we will look into the symmetries and electromagnetic modes of a dielectric structure. So we will be discussing about the symmetries for the classification of electromagnetic modes. We will discuss about real and reciprocal lattice, will photonic band structure and how do you compute them and analyze them. In week 4, we will be discussing about 1D photonic crystals where we will cover the fundamentals and we will look into how we can analyze and engineer the 1D photonic band structure and we will look into different applications of 1D photonic crystals. In week 5, we will be discussing more about 2D photonic crystals, we will discuss about their fundamentals, we will analyze and engineer the 2D photonic band structures and discuss some important applications of 2D photonic crystals. Week 6 will go into the 3D photonic crystals and we will look into different structures or designs of 3D photonic crystals. How do we get crystals with complete band gap and some applications of the 3D photonic crystals. Week 7 will cover periodic dielectric waveguides. So there we will be discussing about the overview and modeling of periodic dielectric waveguides. We will discuss about point effects in those waveguides and the qualification quality factor of lossy cavities and we will take some examples like fiber break rating and discuss their applications. Week 8 or module 8 will be focusing on uh, photonic crystal slabs where we will give a brief overview of how it is designed 
and then different type of defects that you can introduce in uh, photonic crystal slabs and also how do you engineer high q resonant cavity module 9 will be placed across two weeks week 9 and 10 so there will mainly focus on photonic crystal fibers so that's a lot of uh, different application areas we'll be covering so we'll first start with the overview and then index guiding photonic crystal fiber we'll discuss about band gap guidance in holy fiber we'll also go and discuss about break fibers the losses in hollow core fibers and different applications of photonic crystal fibers and the last module that will be on designing photonic crystals for different applications that will be spread across two weeks 11 uh, and 12 so there we'll be looking into how do you design a mirror waveguide and cavity then we'll discuss about temporal couple more theory fundamentals we'll analyze the different structures like filter transmission and waveguide bands using temporal couple more theory we'll also take this theory further to discuss and analyze webcast splitters and 3d filters we'll discuss about non-linear fever filters and bistability and also unusual refraction and diffraction effects so we'll actually cover different application aspects of photonic crystals to end this course so as you can see every week will come with an online assess assignment and at the end of the course you will have an exam if you register to do so now before we begin the study of uh, photonic crystal we need to pay some attention on the electromagnetic spectrum so here you can see the entire electromagnetic spectrum that ranges from radio waves to gamma waves and this is the wavelength that has been mentioned in meters so radio waves like 10 to the power 3 meters is the typical wavelength whereas gamma rays are very very tiny wavelength so 10 to the power minus 12 uh, meter okay and these are the corresponding um, frequency scale and the corresponding uh, black body temperature of the black bodies that can emit this particular radiation so what is interesting is that in this entire spectrum there is only a very small portion that you can actually see so 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer is typically the wavelength that is visible to human eyes now i believe all of you know this particular frequency wavelength cheat sheet that that helps you convert the frequency to corresponding wavelength so you can express the speed of light c as uh, 3 into 20 by 8 meter per second or you can say it's 30 gigahertz centimeter so it means a wave of 30 gigahertz will have one centimeter uh, wavelength if it is 15 gigahertz it will have two centimeter wavelength and so on so now let's go into the discussion of photonic crystal so when you first say photonic crystal you first need to understand what is photonic okay so photonics is basically a subcategory of optics that focuses on the science and technology of photons now photon is often interchangeably used now photonics photonics is often interchangeably used with optics but they do have distinct meanings so optics is basically a broad branch of physics which studies the general behavior and properties of light as well as vision and perception whereas photonics mainly involves in generation detection and manipulation of light in the form of photons and that is where the name photonics come from now photonics is concerned with uh, absorption and emission of light besides its transmission modulation signal processing switching and amplification so here this is what happens in absorption as we all know when a energy is accepted or absorbed by a electron it will jump to the higher energy state and on the other side the reverse phenomena is also possible when uh, there is emission so when the electron jumps from a higher energy level to a lower energy level it can emit the difference of this energy in form of a radiation and that is the emission so these are two different properties now if you compare optics and photonics the difference basically comes in the 
form of the relative size d of the constitutive elements which are interacting with the electromagnetic waves of wavelength lambda. So, when we talk about optics, we are typically talking about elements which are, which are much much larger in size as compared to the wavelength of light. But when you go to photonics domain, we are basically discussing about elements which are of dimension typically comparable to the wavelength of light. So, d is comparable to lambda. This is the domain of photonics. And there is another one also possible where the elements are much much smaller than the wavelength of light and that makes it go to nanophotonics domain. Okay. So, nanophotonics or nano optics is again it is the study of the behavior of light on nanometer scale or actually it is basically the interaction of nanometer scale object with light. So, when we talk about photonic crystal that basically falls in this particular category where the relative size d of the constitutive elements are basically comparable to the wavelength of the electromagnetic wave. So, what are the applications of photonic crystal in 21st century? So, if you see that even though the discovery of photonic crystal dates back to centuries ago, it is still relevant in today's modern world. And we will see the historical timeline and the progress of research in uh, photonic crystal technology very shortly. So, here we will show some major areas of uh, photonic crystal based application. So, figure 1 shows uh, the overall application of photonic crystal where it actually covers a wide range of technologies. And some of these technologies are still progressing in today's time. So, Photonic crystals can be used as sensors for solar stream generation, they can be used for uh, catalysis, solar cell, they can be used as dielectric mirrors, transistor, photonic diodes, color display, smart detector, optical insulator, light emitting diode, polarizers, optical filters, lasers and so on. So, you can see there are a lot of relevant applications of photonic crystals in today's world. If you see photonic this figure 2, it tells you how photonic crystal based laser will revolutionize the market in the future. So, they can be used for you know self driving robots, self driving cars, okay. they can be used for you know construction machinery, automobiles, healthcare, okay. imaging applications, processing applications like solar cells, okay. electronic devices, LiDAR light based um, detection and ranging and all this. So, here this particular figure shows you the applications of photonic crystal based sensors. So, if you look carefully it, it can actually tell you that you can make humidity sensor, temperature sensor, strain sensor and different type of other sensors based on photonic crystal. So, all in all you can actually have a very big market of sensors based on photonic crystals. You can have a lot of you know um, automation done through photonic crystal lasers and all these different applications are also possible. So, if you want to briefly look into the history of photonic crystal, here it is. So, photonic crystals have been studied in one form of the other since 1887. But no one used this term photonic crystal until over 100 years later after um, Sajib John and Ali Yavlanovich they actually published two milestone papers on photonic crystals in 1987. Sajib John actually was formulating an answer to the question whether Anderson localization of electrons in disordered solid can be extended to photons um, in a strongly scattering medium and he predicted that localized states of the electromagnetic field can be created in a periodic dielectric medium. And at the same time Yevlonovich was also trying to address the possibility of suppressing the unwanted spontaneous emission affecting the semiconductor lasers and he then predicted a 3D periodic dielectric that can produce a forbidden gap in electromagnetic 
spectrum. So, as a consequence of the unique properties of the periodic uh, photonic crystals, they attracted worldwide attention of the physicists, chemists and engineers in the field where photonic crystal is now seeing continuous expansion. So, the computational demonstration of photonic crystal was shown in 1990 by Chan and Saukulis. In 1991, experimental demonstration of microwave photonic crystals were done by Evlonovich group. In 1995, large scale 2D photonic crystal in visible range was done by uh, Gruning and Lehman. 1998 saw small scale photonic crystals near visible and large scale inverted opals and in 1999 the first photonic crystal based uh, optical device such as lasers waveguides were realized so that's a brief history of photonic crystals and what is the motivation of working on photonic crystal currently is that the photonic crystal market is expected to grow exponentially you can see it is expecting a growth rate of 8.2% CAGR. Growing use of image sensors and LED applications have fostered demand for photonic crystals. Lower power consumption, low power consumption, high reflectivity and high resolution of pixels per inch. These are basically driving the demand for photonic crystal during this forecast period. You can also see the number of papers being published on photonic crystal over the years. So, this is typically the data um, during the COVID break. So, there is this uh, bit of decline here, but overall the trend shows you that there are a lot of people still interested in the research of photonic crystals. Figure 2 here shows the photonic crystal market analysis in different sectors like manufacturing, healthcare, aerospace and defense, industrial and others. And you can see that there is a rapid growth towards you know 2027 as well so with that we understood the application brief application area and motivation behind studying uh, photonic crystal technology and right now let us go into bit of um, technical details of each of these terms so when you say crystals so what comes to your mind so people usually visualize a beautiful mineral objects with smooth faces in uh, regular dielectric patterns. Others might uh, imagine elegant glassware. For gemologists, the scientific definition uh, of a crystal goes uh, right to the atomic level. So, it is something like a solid material uh, whose constituents such as atoms, molecules or ions are arranged in a highly ordered macroscopic structure. Okay, so this is typically a crystal of quartz. So there are different crystal types. So we can say a solid material is crystalline where the atoms, ions or molecules are arranged in a ordered and repeating manner. Okay, something like a flawless diamond. There are, th this is how crystalline arrangement looks like. It's a perfect orderly pattern. And then you have polycrystalline, which consists of multiple crystalline regions, which are known as grains. As you can see, here are different crystalline regions. Okay, so uh, common examples are like most metals and ceramics. And then there is amorphous uh, materials, which are basically non-crystalline materials, which lack a regular or repeating uh, atomic structure. So it results in a disordered uh, arrangement. So, typical example is glass. Now, remember that not all solids are crystals. So, for example, when liquid water starts freezing, the phase change begins with small ice crystals that grow until they fuse, forming a polycrystalline structure. In the final block of ice, each of the small crystals, which are called crystallites or uh, grains, is a true crystal with a periodic arrangement of atoms but the whole polycrystal does not have a periodic arrangement of atoms because the periodic pattern is basically broken at the grain boundaries. 
so from that those are like natural crystals from that people have engineered photonic crystals now what is photonic crystals photonic crystals are basically composed of periodic dielectric or metallodielectric nanostructures that affect the propagation of electromagnetic light now they are basically containing regularly repeating internal regions of high and low dielectric con constant so here you can see different colors they represent different dielectric constant so this is where high low high low being repeated in 1d one direction so it's called a 1d periodic crystal or 1d photonic crystal this one shows the periodicity in basically two dimension so here high low high low patterning is changing in two directions so this is basically two dimensional photonic crystal and this is a three dimensional photonic crystal so the different colors here they represent different uh, materials with different dielectric constants and uh, what is important so 1d 2d and 3d basically are the periodicity of the dielectric material along one axis or more so that will tell you what photonic crystal it is whether it's a 1d photonic crystal or 2d or 3d photonic crystal now by shaping the incident waves one can steer the waves deep into the crystal thus enabling the focusing of light at any desirable depth as shown in this particular figure so here we will also see in the next slide that how basically a designer can control the propagation of light in this crystal. So photon crystals work by exploiting the principles of interference and periodicity to control the propagation of light within the material. So here is the Bragg diffraction seen in a 1D photon crystal. So this is like one layer and then this is another layer the difference between the two atomic plane is d so here is wave one that has been reflected from the second layer and this is wave two that is reflected from the top layer so what is the difference the part difference between the two is this is the d sine theta this angle is theta this distance is d that is the distance between the two planes okay and d sine theta is basically the length in one arm so the overall difference in path length will be 2 sine theta so when this 2 sine theta the path length is integral multiple of lambda that is where you can say that these two waves will interfere constructively so that is the case where you will see that you are getting a reflection so in those case according to Bragg's law where the inter constructive interference condition is met you can say it is for a particular lambda and a particular angle and that particular light is reflected by the crystal it means that particular wavelength cannot enter the crystal and it is within the photonic band gap so this is how typically a photonic band gap structure looks like for a 2d photonic crystal so these are the different crystal orientation okay and these are the allowed frequency bands okay and you can see this yellow painted region shows you the band gap where no frequencies are allowed to enter the crystal or propagate into into the crystal so this is very similar in concept to the electronic band gap in semiconductors so the principle of propagation of light is in the same way as the periodic potential in a crystal affects the electron motion in semiconductors and you can actually do that by defining allowed and forbidden electronic energy bands just like this shown here so photons as waves they can propagate through the structure or not depends on their wavelength so this frequency also can all it, it also carries the information of the wavelength right so the wavelengths of light that are not allowed that that are allowed to travel th those are known as modes and a group groups of allowed modes form bands okay so the disallowed bands of wavelengths are called photonic band gaps okay so this gives rise to distinct optical phenomena such as inhibition of spontaneous emission high reflecting omnidirectional mirrors 
and also low loss waveguides etc. So if you carefully look into the band diagram and create a waveguide which is a band waveguide 90 degree band waveguide and you can see if so this is a 2D arrangement of say holes or cylinders okay we'll go into the details of the structure later on what you can see one particular row is missing here so that is how you create a line defect and in this particular case you are seeing that you are having a pass band at 100 at 1000 nanometer wavelength and you can see the light is actually able to propagate because it is within the allowed band but if you choose the frequency that is within the band gap for the same structure you can see this cannot propagate through this particular channel so you it is you are actually having a stop band at 700 nanometer wavelength which basically falls within the band gap so here the main idea is to show you that you know within the band the frequencies outside the band gap can propagate but which lies within the band gap cannot propagate through this crystal so if you compare um, photonic crystal with the semiconductors you can say that photonic crystals are basically semiconductors of light in semiconductors you have periodic arrangement of uh, atoms here in photonic crystal you have periodic variation of dielectric constant this is how you do it in 1d this is how you do it in 2d and this is how you do it in 3d so here it is atomic length, length scale but here the length scale is of the order of uh, uh, wavelength here you are mainly talking about the natural uh, structures but here these are mainly uh, artificial structures which are man-made designed so they can control electron flow whereas photonic crystals can control electromagnetic wave or light flow okay so semiconductor as we know have revolutionized electronics industry and then photonic crystals now have the potential to revolutionize photonic circuits photonic integrated circuits as well as towards 6g uh, communication where different devices can be actually made using topological photonic insulators if you look into the natural photonic crystals nature also gives us a lot of applications or application scenarios where photonic crystals are found so over the years scientists have discovered that uh, the iridescence of various colorful uh, creatures something from beetles to birds to butterflies they are not uh, mainly because of the pigmentation rather they are because of the microscopic structures which are there on the particular creature so here is the SEM image of a um, morpho butterfly wing so you can see these are basically periodic structures which are able to reflect these bright beautiful colors similarly for all this uh, you know peacock feather and this um, crystal you can see that all of them are basically periodic crystal which are found naturally so this is for for peacock feather and this is for a opal gemstone and this shows the SEM image of silica sphere st structure within this which is basically a 3d photonic crystal kind of arrangement which gives that bright color okay so this is for again from another butterfly and you can see the, the SEM image of the 3D structure for this particular white area. So what is happening? The bright color that you see that are not coming, coming from the pigmentation rather they are basically the color reflected because of the photonic band gap which exists naturally because of the structure of these natural objects. So photonic crystal is being engineered by God for all these particular uh, creatures. Now as engineers when we discuss and think about um, uh, photonic crystal engineering we need to think why we need photonic crystals. So the invention of photonic crystals actually addressed a long, several long-standing challenges in the field of optics and photonics. Uh, 
and some of the key challenges that photonic crystals have helped overcome they include light confinement and guiding so before photonic crystals achieving effective light confinement and guidance in small scale optical devices was very challenging so photonic crystals allowed for the creation of miniature web guides sharp bands cavities that can confine and manipulate light at the nanometer scale micrometer scale okay enabling the development of compact optical components second one is optical band gap creation so controlling the flow of light and creating optical band gaps band gaps is basically you know a region forbidden region for certain wavelengths was difficult with conventional optical materials but photonic crystal allowed us to achieve those so photonic crystals actually engineered a way introduced a way to engineer these band gaps enabling the development of photonic devices with precise spectral control further it has also helped in high resolution imaging so when you want to do high resolution imaging overcoming the diffraction limit in optical imaging becomes a long standing challenge so using photonic crystals you can actually make super lenses and high resolution imaging techniques which we'll discuss in the subsequent lectures that has allowed researchers to image nanoscale features with great details and accuracy achieve efficient lasers achieving efficient and high performance lasers with narrow line widths and low threshold power was always a challenge so photonic crystals provided a platform for designing and fabricated fabricating advanced lasers which find applications in telecommunications and other scientific research it has also helped towards optical signal processing so traditional optical signal processing faced limitation in terms of speed and efficiency photonic crystals has been used to create photonic circuits and switches which enabled faster and more efficient optical data processing they have also been very useful in quantum technologies it's like developing components for quantum technologies such as quantum computers and quantum communication systems required precise control over the generation and manipulation of the quantum states of light so photonic crystals have been very instrumental very useful in advancing these technologies so you can actually look into lot of new research papers which are basically looking forward to this kind of applications of photonic crystals advanced sensors achieving high sensitivity and selectivity in optical sensors and detectors was a challenge so photonic crystals have been employed to develop high sensitive highly sensitive and specific sensors for various applications including biosensing and environmental monitoring control light manipulation so photonic crystal can control the flow of light in specific ways allowing for creation of certain you know specific optical band gaps so these band gaps are nothing but the forbidden region of certain wavelength of light inside that particular crystal so this property is essential for designing optical devices with precise control over light propagation so light propagation inside the photonic crystal is forbidden by a propagation gap so you can see here this one this particular wavelength is reflected okay but this particular wavelength is propagating so by shaping the incident waves one can steer the wave deep into the crystal enabling focusing of light at a desirable depth inside the otherwise forbidden gap okay so one particular wavelength will simply reflect the other can actually be focused at a particular point so photonic crystal also helped us towards the miniaturization now mi miniaturization means making the devices small so photonic crystals has enabled miniaturization of optical components and circuits making it possible to create smaller and more ef energy efficient photonic devices such as web guides lasers and sensors so here you can see a photonic crystal web guide based polarization filter so t and tm both polarization may incident but then t is basically reflected back and only tm is allowed to propagate okay so only the tm mode 
So what happens? T is basically having a band gap, and T M is allowed to propagate. Okay. Now the second application is about photonic crystal based surface emitting laser. So if you remember, while well, many um, semiconductor lasers are edge emitting lasers, and some of them are surface emitting. That is the output beam is basically per perpendicular to the wafer surface. Now originally such uh, lasers have been realized as vertical cavity surface emitting laser or VC cells okay, where the laser resonator contains at least one external mirror. However, it is possible to obtain vertical emission in combination with a horizontal cavity as well. That is the device where the intracavity laser radiation propagates essentially in directions along the wafer surface. Okay? One of the ways to realize this kind of thing is to utilize a 2D photonic crystal structure okay, like this okay? and uh, such devices are called photonic crystal surface emitting laser. Okay? So for VC cells, one needs to strongly restrict the diameter of the active region when uh, single mode operation is required that usually limits the possible output power to a couple of milliwatts. Higher, much higher output power are possible with uh, larger active areas and this is where photonic crystal comes into the picture as it provides much larger active area while maintaining single mode operation. So that is where photon crystal based surface emitting lasers are also gaining popularity. The other um, important aspect is optical computing. Uh, the development of photonic crystal has actually got the potential to revolutionize optical computing and by controlling the flow of light at nanoscale, they can be used to build high speed optical gates and interconnects. So these two, you know, the optical gates and interconnects can help you get uh, faster and more energy efficient computing. So here is an example of uh, how, you know, you can realize a not gate using a photonic crystal slab. Okay? So what is done, a nonlinear medium with a negative value of N2 uh, can be used for achieving this goal as you can see here. Okay? Here the coupling between the waveguide, so this is the waveguide and the nano cavity okay? is such that when there is no optical pulse at the input, the bias light would emerge at the output. Okay? But on the other hand, when the optical pulse is passed through the input, refractive index of the medium gets uh, reduced due to the negative nonlinearity of the medium. As a result, the resonant wavelength of the resonator differs considerably from the input wavelength of the bias light, resulting in decoupling of the bias light from the nano cavity and the output. Okay? So, in this case, light is not present. So, it behaves like a logical zero when there was a pulse present. But in this case, when there was no pulse, okay, because of the coupling of this two, there was some light present. So, it's like when there is a zero, you get a one, when there is one, you get a zero. So, it basically works like a NOT gate. Okay? So, in this way, the requirement of a NOT gate can be satisfied using this design, wherein the presence of an optical pulse at the input and gives no light at the output and the absence of the optical pulse um, at the input give an optical pulse at the output. Okay? So this is how you can actually differentiate logic 1 and logic 0. Okay? So if one gate not gate can be realized you can also think of the other fundamental gates like NAND gates and NOR gates and then you can actually do uh, optical computing. Now photonic crystals are also shaping the future of 6G technologies with photonic crystal. So topological value photonic crystal is a different type of photonic crystal where we will go into the details later on where you can actually make domain boundaries and make uh, light propagate without any backscattering or any other losses. So they can be used for fabricating um, splitter, combiner, modulator, filters, directional couplers, multiplexer, demultiplexer and so on. 
So all this technology, all these devices will be very useful for enabling 6G at high frequency, something like say 270, 280 gigahertz range. Okay. So top, these are all based on topological photonic crystals that can revolutionize the communication technology. So with the advent of 6G, topological photonic crystals, which are basically a special class of photonic crystals, which can manipulate the flow of light and they are more robust to wave propagation through defects and bands. So it's very, this is a very dynamic area of research and it's a very hot topic. People are currently working on it and in future they can come up with many exciting innovations. Okay, so many passive and active devices can be modeled using this particular technology, which can contribute towards setting up the entire 6G technology in the future. So how it works? So topological photonics is basically a cutting edge field of research that combines the principle from topology, which is a branch of mathematics with photonics, which is basically study of light. So topologic means where they will keep the main feature same but then the shape can go some kind of transformation but that will keep overall feature similar okay so we'll go into details right now it's the first lecture so we'll not tell you about more details uh, right now okay we'll see what are these topological photonics states they basically depend on this particular edge states and also this is a diagram of a topological um, photonic insulator where when a magnetic field is applied you can see circulating currents in the bulk but then at the boundaries you can see helical loops okay through which um, electrons can propagate so these are basically uh, robust against any kind of disorder or defects that is why there is no backscattering loss when you create um, structure based on topological photonic insulators okay they are helpful in forming 1d channels that are basically developed at the edges of the sample and that is why i was telling that we need to do it at the domain boundary okay so each of these edge channels they exhibits the quantized conductance that is the characteristic of a 1d transport and these charge carriers in these channels are very resistant to scattering so you can actually you know, transport energy without any kind of dissipation so where they are very important they are very important towards the interconnect so when there is chip to chip interconnect which are typically made of copper but when you go for high frequency something like 280 or 300 gigahertz which will be required for uh, 60 technology you can also see that the bandwidth density and the energy efficiency with the length of the interconnect it drops dramatically so and copper is also very lossy at those high frequencies so you basically need to use the silicon topological um, photonic insulator based interconnects for connecting one ic to another ic okay so they will be very good interconnects so you can see that the copper interconnect Will be typically works at 3 to 6 gigahertz whereas silicon interconnect works around 335 gigahertz and they support much larger bandwidth density and also much larger aggregated data rate per channel so this is the future okay we have to look for topological photonic crystal based solution towards developing this interconnects so this is a typical example of a straight domain boundary so this is like one unit cell and a different type of unit cell where there, there is a boundary this is like a straight boundary you can also arrange them in a twisted pattern okay simulation has shown that you know the twisted and the straight typically have the similar transmission characteristics as I mentioned these topological states they do not have any backscattering loss and they are very robust to defects and bends so you can actually make them go in any shape without any loss okay so they are robust against imperfections and disorders and this robustness is critical for maintaining the signal integrity in high speed communication system making them less susceptible to signal loss and interference 
they are also backward compatible so um, topological photonics can be integrated into existing photonic systems making it a viable option for upgrading the current 5g networks to meet the demands of the 6g communication okay so all of you must be knowing that 6g communication demands terahertz of tbps uh, data rate where current 5g typically can deliver up to say 10 gbps uh, data rate so, 6G along with uh, topological photonic crystals is going to build the future technology. Efficient signal processing is also possible using this kind of structures because they enable efficient manipulation of photonic states allowing for faster and more energy efficient signal processing. This is particularly re relevant for 6G networks that will require massive data throughput and ultra low latency which is typically less than a uh, few microseconds and also it supports advanced optical switching. So, photon topological photonic devices can offer advanced optical switching capabilities facilitating dynamic network configuration and adaptive routing which is crucial for managing the complexity of a 6G network where it is estimated that 10 million devices, IoT devices will be connected over one square kilometer of land, okay, as compared to 1 million that is connected in 5G technology. High dimensional data transfer rate, okay, so um, topological photonic will allow for exploration of higher dimensional optical states which can significantly increase uh, data transfer rates and capabilities addressing the ever increasing demands of 6G technology. And finally, the security aspect, okay, the topological protection um, of certain photonic states can enhance the security of optical communication, making it more resistant to eavesdropping and tampering. So, all in all, you can see that photonic crystal, although the technology was started several decades back still has got a lot of potential to become one of the promising technologies in the current context when 6G research is going on. So, topological photonic crystals are one of those important areas of research where researchers and industry people will be very much interested in. Apart from that, the conventional photonic crystal based devices are also particularly interesting for photonic integrated circuits where you can actually make waveguides, splitter, coupler, filter, modulator, demodulator, all different devices based on photonic crystals. So, photonic crystal based device engineering or band gap engineering is very, very important and this is what is the main goal of this particular course to cover all these different areas and application and show you how to do it, okay. So, with that we will stop here. And uh, this is all for this introductory lecture or the first lecture on photonic crystals. And if you have got any doubt, you can drop an email to this particular email address dev.shikdar at iitg.ac.in mentioning MOOC photonic crystal on the subject line. Thank you. Mm -hmm.